Hello everyone, still Merry Christmas and welcome to this video which is in our Human Game series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we are taking a look at a pivotal game in the Dutch Women's Championship played between Maaike Keetman and uh, Machtelt van Voorheest in round five. So this was the final round of the preliminary tournament and um, well this game uh, amongst others would determine uh, who goes into the uh, the top set of matches for first and second place that will decide the champion. Um, Martel van Voorheest was on uh, uh, three points already. Maika was on two. So uh, Maika really needed a win in order to get into that playoff. And uh, well, Maika came pretty close. Let's have a look. It was a really interesting game. So e4 played. e5. Knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, Rai Lopez, and then a6, no Berlin uh, today. And uh, after bishop a4, bishop c5. So Machtel plays um, a rather unusual system um, that I've only ever really seen once in an engine game, which I will show you because there are some uh, interesting parallels. But first, let's have a look a little bit how it went on uh, further. So c3, knight e7, castles, and then knight g6. So um, this is really sort of quite old fashioned, actually, pretty uh, Steinitzian, I think you'd say. You know, the, um, the knight moves uh, e7 to g6 to protect e5. Um, black's going to play uh, d6 and um, support the pawn on e5 and then gradually try and uh, yeah, expand out of there, really. So um, d4 played, bishop a7, bishop g5, forcing f6, so uh, a weakness on that diagonal there. Um, bishop b3 castle so uh, yeah this interesting move order from uh, from black here you're um, often what happens is that you uh, you've played d6 early and white's got ideas like d5 or can play bishop b3 and stop you from castling here black's actually been able just to uh, to castle and then after rook e1 d6 h3 king h8 and knight bd2 and uh, here black's got to decide how exactly to proceed. I mean, after all, you've got a, a pretty solid uh, center there, reinforced by pawns on f6 and d6. But what are you going to do in terms of uh, activity? Well, I just want to show you um, the game Stockfish against Lila Zero from uh, a few seasons ago at the TCC because um, it was quite similar and you got an idea of what black might actually aim for in these positions. So um, just moving back, it's uh, still e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5. But here the book move was um, bishop c5, not a6, first of all. But you're going to see that things were very similar. Um, actually, the engines were already out of book here. And uh, so Leela by itself decided to play uh, a very similar plan to, uh, to Machtelt here. Bishop b3, d6, you can see the, um, the similarities. Um, I think, yeah, d5 is not... Um, terrible i think you go was it a6 i'm uh, trying to remember this from when i looked at it a while back and bishop b3 and then you managed to get him b5 to stop the pin quite confusing but it all just hangs together so queen b3 played by uh, stockfish to stop the um uh, the king from castling and then we got a6 bishop d3 knight to a5 queen chased away and castles Rook e1, knight c6, knight d2, king h8. You can see why, uh, uh, you know, where the similarities come from. And again, you know, Leela had to decide here, you know, how is um, is black going to uh, to get any counterplay at all? Because white looks pretty well organised and, um, yeah, not clear where the breaks for black are coming from. Um, actually, what happened was that a3, bishop d7, h3, a5. So Leela starting to look, with a, with a rook's pawn of course, looking for a4. And after b3 played queen c8 and uh, started teeing up on the um, white queen side. And this is quite interesting because we'll see a number of things uh, like this later in the game. And after d5, knight e7, takes takes. Um, accepted these uh, double pawns on the queen side. And then started uh, running with, uh, with g5. Queen c3, rook g8, and g4. And uh, it was a total tactical mess. I look at it in some detail in uh, the Silicon Road Chess Improvement, which is a chessable course and also a book as well. So uh, if you're interested, you know, do take a look at that. But um, yeah, I mean, this really shows that the sort of counterplay that black can have. So some sort of counterplay against the white king side. And then, um, you know, you're looking for uh, uh, so some sort of expansion, knight f4 and then g5 to g4. So, yeah, it makes it seem quite an interesting system for black there. 
So let's go back to um, uh, Mike and Machtel's game. So um, uh, just uh, play through the moves there. D4, bishop a7. We see that uh, Machtel in this way, by playing a6 first, gets the bishop onto a7, which is probably a little bit nicer for, uh, for black. Castles, h3, knight d2. And now knight e7. So we're still in opening theory. Um, actually, there was a high-class game played uh, 2022 between uh, Eric Hansen and uh, Pavel Elyanov, um, which carried on with e takes d4, um, takes, takes, bishop d4 and f5. Quite common now, and we're going to see this in the game, you know, this idea of taking on d4, swapping off some pieces, and then breaking with f5 afterwards is um, um, yeah, quite a natural way for black to get activity. Obviously, the rook uh, gets active, and, uh, well, when the f-pawn goes, the queen can come into the king's side, and uh, there's always that little feeling that you might be able to attack a pawn on h3 somehow. So that's uh, quite interesting um, there. Um, yeah, uh, what were my um, uh, engines playing? Um, there was stuff, for example, like um, bishop d7, knight f1, queen e8, bishop c2, a5, very similar, knight g3, knight f4, um, was played in uh, in one of my, um, of my engine games. Um, a5, uh, bishop b3, queen e8, um, this uh, this actually got quite similar to uh, to this Leela Stockfish game. Again, we're going knight f4 and then g5 in there, which, uh, you know, gave black uh, pretty good counterplay. Stockfish was playing black in that uh, game. But Machtelt uh, played um, knight e7, which is also uh, quite interesting. And um, uh, Mike went knight f1. So it's very important here that, uh, you know, white shouldn't uh, release the, 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 the tension in the center too early because uh, the fact that you've got this uh, possibility of playing d takes c5, that stops black from, uh, you know, playing a quick break with f5. So knight f1's a very sensible move, heading for g3, uh, which will help uh, break a little bit f5 and, uh, yeah, just waiting to see what black will do. And now a novelty was played. There was um, a game uh, between two um, players around uh, 2350, 2400, uh, where black played the pretty committal c5. Interesting move. Um, you know, putting some pressure on d4. Feels like you're uh, being very unkind to, um, to this bishop on, um, on uh, a7. But um, you are gaining some queenside space to expand. So knight g3, b5, bishop b2, bishop b7, queen d2, rook c8. Didn't look so bad for uh, for black, I have to say. You know, actually quite uh, quite reasonable. Um, in my engine games, uh, Dragon 3.2, the new version, which I was uh, happy to try out. Um, yeah, e takes d4 uh, was played. Knight d4 and f5, and this is very similar to this um, um, Hansen Elyanov game that I showed earlier. You know, and then you're taking and uh, taking here, but you know why it's a little bit better here. I mean, this rook's a little bit uh, silly on uh, on a7. So you go knight g3, bishop d7, bishop c2. You know, and uh, it's quite pleasant for white, but um, but black, you know, in principle is not too bad. Um, so that was uh, possible too. Uh, Machtel played um, um, a new move here, played bishop e6, which is, uh, you know, very sensible. Developing move, and then we're just going to see um, uh, where things uh, go. I mean, one idea could be that you're just going to play queen c8 and then have a go at uh, at sacking on h3 that's you know not at all impossible it's always the sort of thing i spend ages on when i'm uh, when i'm playing this sort of stuff with white just uh, wondering is you know is black lunatic enough to do that i know i would be as black but uh, <laughs> you know uh, you do waste a lot of time on this sort of stuff so knight g3 played um and now machtel made um yeah interesting decision here and played c6 um, again, actually, um, the engine's uh, um, dragon uh, against uh, Stockfish played the move c5 again. So d5, bishop c8. And after bishop c2, played c4. So, uh, yeah, you're, getting, you're going to exchange off this uh, dark squared bishop and then hopefully get into f4 and, uh, you know, start coming with g5. You know, pretty, pretty interesting. How did that game go? b3, takes, takes. Took on b3. When b5 just get a bit of uh, a bit of a break on uh, white's queen side uh, play, and then black started uh, uh, playing f5. You know, pretty interesting, pretty sharp. Um, another idea from uh, from Stockfish's black was uh, um, an idea that I would definitely like to play, and that's queen c8, eyeing this pawn h3, 
for uh, eternity. Well, Dragon actually was quite cautious and swapped off the light squared bishops like this. But uh, Stockfish played uh, yeah, b4, bishop c7, brought the bishop back into play, and it's very, very solid. I mean, white's got a nice edge, a, um, um, a nice double pawn center there on, uh, on uh, uh, d4 and e4. But um, uh, yeah, you know, with, a, with one pair of minor piece exchange, the, the, the space advantage is not so important. And black's, uh, you know, fairly harmonious. Lots of ideas, you know, of taking on d4 and one time playing either a, a d5 or an f5 break. But Machtel's move, c6, was very sensible. Um, Queen c2, again, Micah just uh, very uh, carefully there, not releasing the central tension at any moment, just uh, keeping the tension in the position and, yeah, making Black guess as to her intentions and, uh, yeah, also, you know, preventing Black from clearly going for a plan. You know, keeping the central tension, it's, uh, you know, a little bit of a cliche sometimes, and it's not always the best idea. But, you know, if you keep uh, tension in a, in, a, in a position, it does um, put a lot more strain on the opponent who has to, uh, you know, to be thinking all the time, oh, you know, uh, um, it's not just, uh, you know, one structure they have to deal with. It's maybe three or four possible ones. Puts more strain on you as well, but you hope that if you're on the, you know, the better side of the position, that it's um, uh, less difficult for you and more difficult for your opponent. But here, Machtelt uh, played a very interesting decision. I wasn't too sure about it, to be honest. Uh, sort of felt, you know, it goes a bit, when you've spent so much effort playing, uh, you know, knight e7 over to g6, and then uh, you've played um, f6 and d6, you sort of feel, well, I should be keeping this pawn on, d on e5 forever, really. But, um, yeah, this is a, a very interesting idea, just to take on d4, and then give up the bishop pair. Uh, c takes d4, and now f5 from uh, from Machtel. and this is a very typical idea but actually um, I think I think we can say that this is a, a mistake really C certainly after Micah's uh, move uh, which is really nice I um, I liked white very much you know even if the engines think that it's uh, okay you know it should be okay for black I think it's you know it looks very very uh, very very pleasant for white um, the engines actually just wanted to play d5 in this position and uh, the idea is that if you go f3 I take off and then if you take off, you go f5. And uh, somehow you've diluted this white structure, central structure, a lot more. So, um, you know, you're threatening f4. And if you go e f5, um, uh, knight f5, then, yeah, somehow we've, you know, we created a, a real isolated pawn here um, uh, um, on d4. And uh, plenty of, there are plenty of light squares free for the black pieces that uh, the black can occupy. And then, uh, yeah, you know, try and attack the, um, uh, the white king side, you know, moves like... Uh, Knight h4 as well could be dangerous. So, um, yeah, I mean, after d5, f3 is possible. Yeah, bishop b3, we go queen d7, and then we're threatening d takes c4 again. Yeah, I mean, my, my engines didn't really um, uh, have great ideas for white here. Bishop d2 was quite a nice one, I thought. Uh, you know, maybe looking to come around here and also allowing you after d takes c4, maybe to go queen e4 and attack the, um, uh, the knight on e7. Now after a5, queen d3, takes, knight takes, b5, bishop c2, bishop c4, queen c3, knight f5. Yeah, somehow it's a bit ugly for black, but uh, black's very, very active here, you know, and, uh, well, this seemed to be, um, you know, approximately equal as well. So actually, you know, it's possible that, uh, that Martel's plan, you know, taking uh, on d4 was actually really, really good and that, uh, you know, d5 would have been um, um, a pretty nice idea, really. I mean, I think the best thing that uh, the engine thought was actually to take on e4, which feels a bit counterintuitive, but the idea is simply, you know, you'll have a knight on c5, the rook will come to e1, and you'll have a little weakness on e6 to, um, uh, to look at. But okay, you know, it's not so, um, it's not so amazing, really. Um, the engines, you know, sort of saw a slight edge for white because this knight is powerful, but, um, but nothing that, uh, that couldn't be dealt with. You know, bishop b3, knight e7. Knight f4 takes takes knight f5 and uh, yeah again you know white still got some advantage because of this uh, open e file but yeah it's not so uh, not so much somehow but after f5 Micah played a really nice move here um, and uh, this was the move d5 um, now it's one of the engine choices um, they were sort of varying a little bit between uh, this move and bishop g5, which is um, yeah, a, a little bit sharper. I like um, d5 an awful lot because it just gives black that weakness. And, um, you know, 
Blacks really need, um, I think, a lot of energy and a lot of accuracy in order to, um, uh, you know, to make sure that weakness doesn't become uh, crucial. And uh, well, in the game, you know, um, uh, Mike got a really fantastic position. So I think it's, uh, it's it would probably be my choice, you know, practically in this position. Uh, what you can say though is that Bishop G5 is also very interesting. Um, so putting some pressure on this knight, and of course the uh, the rook is uh, here on the e file. I mean, if you go f4, then I go knight f5, queen c7, and um, yeah, I mean the engines want to take take and go uh, knight h4 and then knight f3 and you're going to claim that you're a bit better which you are but yeah a bit surprised that uh, stockfish was getting so excited by it you know it was um uh, this is a uh, um stockfish pre 15.1 for uh for those who um who follow these things so um the um, evaluations are a little bit more uh, more zany somehow. It was uh, a 1.37 advantage. You know, it's uh, that's not winning yet, but it's quite uh, quite substantial, really. I'm not 100% uh, sure about that, to be honest. I like d5 an awful lot. Why do I like d5? Well, after c takes d5, we go e takes f5, and then we've just got these lovely clear targets on d6 and d5. You know, so we know we're pretty sure that we're going to be able to win that front pawn. You know, we'll line up with the queen and the and the bishop on it. And then afterwards, black will have a weak pawn on d6 and also weak queenside pawns. And at the same time, you know, the whole center's being cleared somehow. And, uh, you know, this diagonal could become very important. You know, the big problem with black extending off the f pawn, it opens up the line of the rook, but it does, you know, really get rid of some protection along the diagonal. And of course, you've got the ideal bishop on e3 to exploit it. So, yeah, I mean, I like this very much. And here I think probably Matteld went um, a little bit wrong. Um, knight f5 was what um, um, the engines wanted after takes to take with a bishop. Um, takes with a bishop is uh, quite important. And then after queen d2, then bishop e4. You're just playing really, really actively very, very quickly. And uh, um, yeah, I mean, probably a move like bishop d1 is quite a good idea, you know, to... Um, um, to cover the king side here, because uh, in a game of uh, Leela zeros against Stockfish that I ran, um, Bishop B3 was met by Bishop G2. So king takes, we go check, and queen D7. Supposed to be a draw, but um, somewhat scary. Um, bishop G5 was uh, was an answer. Queen D7, King G2. The bishop's covering H4 here, but then we go H6, just to chase away. And uh, yeah, I mean, this was a typical uh, game where you'd really want to be an engine in order to uh, to deal with it. But yeah, I mean, this was pretty pretty dangerous for um, for for white somehow. Also, you know, in the end, pretty dangerous for black, of course. But uh, you know, it's really uh, rook takes f2 in the, in this position. Love the idea of king f2. I've got queen f3 and uh, and queen g2. So the king has to run to d1, and then we get check rook c2. Rook c8, queen g2, queen h3, and uh, yeah, the game went on and uh, eventually ended in a draw. Um, you know, there's um, quite a bit of counterplay. Knights coming into g2, the queen's pinned along there. Crazy game, totally crazy game. But uh, yeah, you know, I mean, I, I think uh, um, uh, this sort of counterplay, you know, is what you really want, I think. Um, you don't want, to, you know, to let white just um, uh, latch onto those... Uh, uh, weak d pawns um so something uh, very very energetic was required i mean i think that's what we can uh, deduce from this so martel played bishop f5 um and now queen d2 and it was somehow a lot harder for um for black to get that activity i mean this uh, knight on e7 is um is a little bit passive uh, of course and uh, blocking the line of the queen like that and um, yeah, b5 was played by uh, Martel. Again, the engines aren't totally crazy about this. I find it hard to, um, yeah, to criticize or to, um, uh, you know, really, because uh, it's, it's not very clear to me really what, what black should be doing here. I've got, uh, you know, plenty of nice thoughts for white, you know, about, uh, oh, we're just going to maybe, uh, you know, swap off a bishop, win that d pawn, come into this one I can think of all that but I can't really it's I don't find it very easy to find um you know an easy plan for uh, for white so um um b5 was played which looks quite reasonable to be honest to you know give the queen some freedom and also line up against uh, this guy or this girl but um um oh I called it uh, Harriet the H pawn when I was watching a game of uh, of Harriet Hunt recently 
but um, um, yeah, after Queen D7, um, yeah, the engines like uh, Knight takes F5, they're actually really going for the full out positional option here. So Rook takes F5, Bishop D1, Knight E5, and then they just start um, really just restricting the knights. They just say, oh, I've got two bishops uh, and you've got two knights and weak pawns. Um, I don't need to do anything uh, amazing anymore. I'm just going to, um, uh, to just uh, restrict all your pieces. And they play like um, like this, and um, yeah, of course, you know, d5 is um, is hanging here after rook c8, a4 was played, rook takes a4, which is a very nice move, actually. It defends uh, the pawn laterally and also attacks the pawns. And, uh, you know, the idea simply is um, kind of a, of a slow squeeze, really. You know, that was uh, the idea. And this was very effective, uh, you know, uh, for, uh, for white. So that's definitely an idea, but I, I mean, Micah's move, bishop d4, is very, very nice. I mean, it's... Uh, um, it's really reinforcing the weakness of this uh, of this king now that you've uh, moved the f pawn and uh, yeah very nice move indeed. Rookie eight and now Mike had played a move that uh, that I was uh, um, that I was expecting. Um, although the engines think that again it's slightly worse than uh, than the optimal move, but um, yeah again it's a, it's a very strong move. I mean, Micah played a4 here, which is, uh, I think, you know, very good strategy in general. I mean, you just want to go a, b and rook a7, and you want to try and play it over the whole board. So, yeah, you know, it's, uh, as I said, it's not the engine's 100% uh, favourite move, but uh, it's still got a very good ranking. Um, knight h5 is what the engines wanted, rook f7 and then rook e3. And then they're going to try and, you know, double up here and uh, and put some big pressure on the king's side. Um, yeah. Interesting, interesting. I mean, um, uh, rook e f8 was what uh, Stockfish did against Leela. Rook e1 takes, 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 and rook e2. And uh, well, Leela thought that this was, um, you know, very nice for white, really. And uh, I guess it's probably true. I mean, the pawn on d5 is weak, and um, yeah, the, the white posi the black position's a little bit loose. You know, actually, how do you, d do you defend that d pawn? It's not easy to say because you've got this uh, this pin, so you can't even advance it. So, yeah, you know, that's uh, that's that's probably pretty dangerous as well. But a four is uh, is excellent strategy. Um, now, the interesting thing is that um, yeah, the engines were still pretty desperate here, and um, uh, Martel played knight c six, which is you know quite a um, yeah, just a normal, uh, a normal move. Just trying to get rid of a uh, of the dark squared bishop. Um, the engines were were going all in with bishop takes h three here, takes and knight f four. Um, bishop d one uh, to be able to cover the uh, the g two square, and then just check and knight f four. So threatening queen h three into g two, and then we go bishop f three. And um, well, it seems like there's no you know real uh, direct uh, breakthrough here. But um, Stockfish somehow was managing to hold on with uh, b4, rook c1, knight g6, you know, trying to bring this knight either to h4 or to e5, takes, takes, bishop g4, knight e5, takes queen e5, and just kept on creating play here. And after rook c8, the rooks came off, but then we get h5 into h4. Yeah, tricky and really on the edge, but, uh, but somehow... Uh, with Stockfish on the black side, it was um, it was turning out quite interesting. But yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, you know, I, 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 I sort of uh, um, tweeted, tooted nowadays with uh, being on Mastodon. But uh, um, you know, I said during the game that I, I thought it was unlikely that uh, that Martel would play this because you know it's not really very clear that um, the black has much more compensation when you get to this position. To be honest. Um, it's just, uh, yeah, that Stockfish sort of sees that, that white can't really do anything dramatic. But, yeah, again, not obvious at all for a human player. Um, Martel played the very sensible move, knight c6, just trying to get rid of, um, of a bishop there. Um, a takes b5, a b5, and bishop d5. Um, yeah, I mean, this is just a, a really nice position, right? We've won our pawn back. This bishop now is covering the king's side, which is really nice. And, um, you know, if you play moves like knight d4, I can maybe take on e8 check uh, first. But the general idea is, you know, getting this beautifully centralized queen. And then we'll be having all sorts of threats like rook a7 takes g7 in combination with knight h5. So, yeah, really, really powerful. So Martel played knight g e5, which, you know, um, again, the engines are, you know, not uh, fantastically keen about uh, all of these moves. But, 
yeah, you know, from a human point of view, you can absolutely understand this, and I think it's probably the best move. You know, you're you're trying to create confusion. You're trying to come into d3. You're trying to come into c4. You're just trying to fight back at um, at white's pieces and uh, trying to be bold. And you're trying to uh, to create some worry. And um, uh, but it could have gone um, uh, wrong. Well, certainly if you're playing an engine, but well, who wouldn't <laughs> would go wrong for everyone under those circumstances, of course. Um, F4 was um, uh, a really strong move here. Um, and we, there's a couple of ideas. I mean, if you go um, knight takes d4, I just take, I take off, I play this move rook c1, which is really important. And the horrific thing is that rook a7 is coming in next. So, um, yeah, I don't know what you do, actually. I mean, if you go queen d7, I just go rook a7 and, uh, yeah, you can't stop mate. And this is just, you know, powerful, just all of a sudden, really. Um, knight c4 is, uh, is a better move. And here the engine wanted to do something uh, um, a bit, little bit tactical. Bishop c6, knight d2, bishop d7, takes, 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 and then rook a7. And yes, it's opposite colored bishops, but, uh, you know, opposite colored bishops, when it's just pure opposite colored bishops, they're often very drawish. Add a rook on and add a knight on and add a... Uh, <laughs> a black king that's very worried about the g7 pawn and you've got a uh, yeah a total disaster for black um yeah i mean this is just uh, for example if you try and just go rook d8 i've got uh, was it bishop b6 here just chasing the uh, rook away and then just winning the bishop on d7 so yeah you know uh, this would have been f4 would have been a really good move um you know for all that i do think that um that, uh, that this move of Martel's uh, knight g5 was in a human game absolutely a good chance but yeah objectively i think uh, you know really putting uh, black really you know tipping black over the edge there but uh, bishop c3 was played by Micah, which is a nice move as well just trying to keep this um um this bishop uh, this bishop alive and also getting out of the attack of the knight so that you know knight d3 is less dangerous now and um yeah again the engines are actually getting a bit desperate uh, they they really wanted black to play b4 and uh, and just give up a pawn like this and uh, and then try and uh, play the position um but yeah you know white is a clear pawn up um not an easy technical task by any means but uh but of course, you, you know, you'd much rather be white, wouldn't you? So uh, as Tony Miles once said to me when I complained about the difficulty I had uh, converting an extra pawn, it was a game I eventually drew, he said, but a pawn is a pawn is a pawn, uh, which uh, is one of the truest things that's ever been said to me. But it is true. I mean, it's, uh, it's the attitude that you should have simply, you know, oh, I'm a pawn up. You know, Tony always managed to look really happy when he was a pawn up. And uh, I was, you know, looked a little bit um, <laughs> sort of worrying, you know, am I going to make it? But um, yeah, you've just got to feel happy about it really when those things happen to you. Um, so Bishop G6 was, um, was played. Um, and now, um, yeah, now probably Micah started to go a bit wrong after having played at an absolutely stellar level all the way through. Here's where it just started to, to go wrong and where, yeah, just didn't quite manage to make that uh, push through. The the, um, the best move was actually one that's not at all obvious. Um, the best move, uh, according to, to the engines, was to play b4. Simply just keep this bishop on c3 alive. It's pointing towards this king. If this barrier on e5 goes, then um, you know black's going to have so many problems, you know, in so many variations. So just keep it alive, and um, yeah, you're just planning to um, to somehow put pressure on the um, on the black position. I mean, Micah's move, what she played on uh, uh, on this move, yeah, knight e4 can suddenly become very very uh, annoying. Um, let's have a look. I mean, uh, knight c4, for example, I just take 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 and go queen d5 this was the idea bishop f7 queen f5 and queen g5 and i've got ideas like knight h5 i'll go b5 to chase your knight away so you haven't got control of these squares i've got f4 to f5 as well it's really it's all coming in you know it's uh um opposite color bishops when you're attacking they're a huge force because you know obviously the opponent uh, doesn't have anything to oppose your bishop and uh, yeah this is another great example we saw it very often in the games of alpha zero and yeah great example here and uh yeah i mean if you play it sort of tight at the back then um uh you know white just can easily just increase the uh um you have a power of the position so here rook d6 
not afraid at all about these opposite color bishops and we go rook e1 and we go h4 and it's just all coming in right i mean h5 h6 all this stuff um yeah this was what the um the engines were doing but uh, you just look at those uh, that dark square control and uh, how uh, uh, lonely the king is feeling there and uh, yeah you just know that this is going to be decisive for white so that was the the key idea it, i mean basically i think michael was just one consolidating move short of um uh of a uh, you know an absolutely massive upset there um because I think I do think that after if you find this move B4, then you're going to be I don't know the the rest sort of slots into place, you know. But um, um, knight E4, absolutely the right idea, you know. Getting this knight on G3, which isn't doing a great deal, getting it active, but uh, yeah, it gives um, um, Martel the opportunity to play B4, and actually, um, it's even more annoying than you might think because now after Bishop B4, Knight B4, Queen B4. Black can go knight d3. I mean, these tricks didn't work before because you always had a, a rook takes c8 uh, interpolation. But yeah, now that you play the knight to e4, that's just not quite working. I mean, it's very easy in practical games, you know, just to, to miss those little details or, you know, to get focused on what you're doing and then just miss that somehow, you know, just like a really good developing move like knight e4 redeployment is actually just blocking your, um, uh, is blocking out one of the tactical things that was... Um, yeah, that was really helping you. Um, Bishop d4 is no longer it's no longer a decisive advantage, but still the engines uh, were quite happy with this position. Um, I mean, White's beautifully entrenched in the center. You know, this bishop on d5 will never be moved. This knight on e4 is pretty solid actually, and we've got some weak pawns to attack. It would still be very much onus on Black to try and uh, save this somehow. And um, this was a, a typical engine game. What have we got? This is um, uh, this is. Uh, uh, stockfish against dragon queen e7 rook a6 knight g4 so uh, uh discovering an attack on the bishop rook a7 hitting uh, g7 queen f6 takes takes and bishop g6 and it's a nasty ending right i mean um uh, this one's weak this one's weak as well and this bishop is um is really being very unpleasant uh, keeping the king pinned to the back the engines managed to hold it, but you know, if I'm looking at it just for myself as uh, as black, wouldn't feel too happy. I have to say, um, I think I, I, you know, to be honest, I think I'd probably assume that I was uh, um, that I was close to loss, you know, with uh, with black if I ever got this position. Apparently, it's not like that, but uh, but still quite difficult. So, I think there was still a chance, although obviously, you know, it's it's quite uh, um, it's. Yeah, you know, it's not quite as much as it um, as it was before, but but still, you know, um, lots of chances there. Um, but uh, yeah, I think uh, probably, I mean, you know, of course, it's a practical game. Time is running short. You're playing a very strong opponent. Um, uh, Micah went for something a little bit safer, which was to take on e5, uh, d takes e5, and then grabbing this pawn. And, uh, you know, at first sight, it looks like a very sensible thing to do. Just grab this pawn and, uh, um, you know, just uh, play the position. Um, but unfortunately, uh, somehow, yeah, the attack of the queen and the um, uh, the bishop on the knight make it awkward now for uh, for white to defend the, the b2 pawn and also defend the knight on e4. Actually, it's impossible. So Micah had to swap off the queens. But now after f3, well, we're going to get this position where... You've got rook and three versus rook and two. I mean, rook and four versus rook and three is something that you can uh, still always try. Um, but rook and three versus rook and two is very, very even. And uh, yeah, you know, uh, Micah gave it a, um, a good go, but uh, but Machtelt, uh, you know, held it and um, made sure that uh, she got the half point that uh, allowed her to qualify um, for the first and second place matches. And in the end, she's uh, facing uh, Anna Hast in the uh, in the final. And uh, Micah uh, will be uh, playing off for third, fourth against uh, Elina Rubers, uh, which is going to be a very exciting, uh, exciting match there. And then finally rounding it off, we've got Robin against uh, Anna Maya, which should also be great fun. Um, do have to say that, um, you know, this um, I've had a great time watching this tournament. Uh, really, you know, kudos to all the players because, um, you know, a five round tournament where, you know, a win or a loss could be so important. You know, it could make uh, it would make some players very, very cautious. But uh, all of, um, you know, all of these women have uh, have uh, just fought like uh, like demons and uh, and really uh, 
produce some fantastic chess. And there's been a, a lot of unusual openings. There's been um, nice combinations. There's been you know nice grinds as well. It's been um, a real mixture. So uh, really great enjoyment. And this was such a good game. Really was such a good game. And uh, yeah, Micah, you know, so agonizingly close to uh, to playing an absolutely you know beautiful positional masterpiece. But uh, in the end, Machteld uh, holding out. Um, like the tough defender that she is and uh, going on to the uh, the first and second place matches. So there we are. Well, I'm definitely going to be looking at those matches. Hopefully we'll get a, a few more videos out of that. I'm sure we will. Um, if you like the video, why not give a like, subscribe to the channel. Why not take a look at the chessball course, the Silicon Road to Chess Improvement, which uh, um, is all about engine chess, explains how I analyse games like this with my engines and what I do about it. If you're interested in how um, how this all takes place, you think, oh, that analysis is bad, then um, there's also a masterclass taking place, a chessable masterclass. Have a look on the chessball site, look at me, and uh, you can see the introduction to the course. But anyway, thanks very much for watching and uh, have a great new year. And uh, well, thanks for watching and hope to see you at the next video.